This is the technical difficulties, and we are playing two of these people are lying, because two of these people will be. Chris Joel. Hello. Gary Brown. Good pint of gravy of an evening sets you up for a night. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Gray. And seeing as I can't follow that up, I'll just explain what's going on. The three of us have each looked up a different Wikipedia article on our phones. I like how you both drank at the same time. <laughs> two bodies, one brain. We've written down the title of each article on a piece of paper that's down there. Tom is going to pick one of those pieces of paper and try and guess which one of us is telling the truth. The other two, seeing as we haven't read the article, are going to be talking sh**. And all I have to do is work out which two of these people are lying. And we are talking about... Johnston's Robin. Johnston's Robin. Or jo I think it's Johnston, that's not Johnstone's. Johnston's Robin. Uh, Gary, why don't you start this time? Johnston's Robin is named after a, a play, well, what a better word, a play, a manoeuvre, uh, in, in, in cricketing circles in the 1890s. It was done by uh, Robin Jenkins, who played for Gloucestershire, and it's a manoeuvre where one fools the batting side by pretending to make some kind of catch. So to put off a batsman, you would do Johnston's Robin, which is a fake move in a cricket field. Just to be clear, you're saying that Johnston Robin was named after Robin. Yes. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> right, can we just say, that kind of sh did you really well first time, didn't it? And second time. <laughs> so, you discount away, because both times you've done that, you've been wrong. It's alright, Tom. He wasn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> he was just starting. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Do you want to carry on because the Robin part is named after the hopping manoeuvre that was involved? You said it was named after Robin. Because it's a funny name, because you've got Robin Bird and Robin as a person. People are trying to be funny. People are known to do that. I mean, look at us <laughs> trying. Do, do you want to run me through the, the, the causation <laughs> the manoeuvre? Yeah. No, just, not the manoeuvre, just, just, just run me through what you said. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris. I wasn't there, Your Honour. Yeah. You would have to consult my lawyer. <laughs> yes. Chris, Johnston's, Johnston's, Robin. Johnston's Robin, I'm afraid this is a stub, so you're not going to get a lot, is a trig point just north of Bamford in the Hope Valley in the Peak District, 210 metres on an unremarkable little knoll as it rises up the valley side to the actual high trig points along the top. So trig points, just for those oh, who so, don't know, they're, oh, they're sorry, navigation yeah. pillars. Yeah, it's, so you put them on high places so you can put your, what's it called? The angle measuring device. Angle measuring gubbins in it and it lets you map out the local topography. They're usually on very high places but sometimes to map out a lower area to be on something lower and that's what Johnston, well, the little hillock is Johnston's Robin, but there's now a trig point at 210 and change metres. That is an entirely plausible Wikipedia stub. Matt, Johnston's Robin. It's a robin, a type of bird. <laughs> it lives in Taiwan. And for everything that I could see in the article, <laughs> it's not actually named after someone called Johnston. Oh, God. I could find um, no evidence. A lot of stuff gets named... In honour, doesn't it? Yes. Because like, there's, there's butterflies called that and Barunz yes. and yes. things like yes. that. Yes. The article didn't mention this. It is <laughs> right. called whatever the, the phrase... It sounds like you've repeated the article verbatim there. So it's a f***ing <laughs> robin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wikipedia, all right. <laughs> Once again, I can't remember the Latin word for robin, but it was robin Johnstonii. <laughs> Robinius. I, I always love that there is, there is a bird out there. I think it's the black bird. Is Turdus Turdus? Yes, it is. Turdus Turdus, yeah. <laughs> sh -ty, sh -ty. <laughs> I like that. Oh, that's a difficult choice. I mean, I kind of just want to come back to the cricket manoeuvre. Fair. Um, not because I think it's right. I just want to hear you continuing to try and lie about this. <laughs> Can I say, yeah, continue to try and lie on the first one we did, which worked out grand. It did. It did. Yeah. What, what, can you describe the cricket manoeuvre? Cricket manoeuvre, obviously you have a bowler coming in, at which point it is now illegal in the rules of cricket to do a deceptive manoeuvre. You cannot pretend... Well, no, you cannot pretend to it's just run... just not up. cricket. It's not. <laughs> you cannot pretend to run over here when the ball is going over here. Okay, so you, you, you have to be honest in the field. This was the start of that kind of, for want of a name, horse <laughs> Okay? When Gary captain... Brannan stands for unfair cricket. Well, it is ho... <laughs> no, 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 no. Distract the no, distract the captain is horse shit. Let's face it. Oh, it's you can't do that, right? In this, the manoeuvre was someone would perform a hopping manoeuvre deeping the field to make someone go, F you know. What well, is like, that? Literally on one leg hopping. Well, yeah, well, it was, it, uh, the story goes it was in the, the way of tying a boot 
or something like that. Like, you know, you, get, you pull, might pull one leg up because your shoelace has come a bit loose. Try and tie it, hopping around, dicking around in the field, trying to distract the batsman. Therefore, he gets halfway down his run, looks over, so realises... Oh, he's on the ball yeah, when it's actually over there. It's actually over there, which has obviously gone quite short. Bale's whipped off. Massive argument on field. And which leads to the point, not long after, that doing a deceptive manoeuvre in the field to distract a batsman while in play is in fact illegal and not within the spirit nor the laws of the game. And is known as a Johnson's Robin. Correct. I, because of the flipping manoeuvre. I admire how well you've pulled that back, back <laughs> from the edge. Can I say, can we get those six eggs from over there ready to slash them on your face <laughs> later on? I'm going to level with you, Gary. If it turns out that this is true... I, I feel like you, you deliberately... God. Frightful shade of deja vu. I'm getting it. <laughs> I almost feel like you deliberately screwed up the introduction to say it was named after Robin. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a deceptive manoeuvre someone would play in a game where we're trying to disguise who may be lying. What kind of man would do that, that, I ask you? I have another fact about the bird. Oh. Shall I tell you the name of the person who discovered it? Yes. William Robert Ogilvy Grant. Oh, yes. Oh. There is bird. no Johnston in that at all, yet it is still called Robin as Johnston-y. Oh, Matt. <sighs> also, if, if the name was ever going to be real, it'd be that one. Yeah. It's got it, some weight behind that's, it. That's, that's, either, that's either a genuine name, or it's just a name that Matt has plucked from somewhere else. That takes a lot of plucking. And I so there's a Johnston's Robin. <laughs> on the Robin <laughs> side. <laughs> Gary, I don't think it's you. I, I, I think you're lying because I just think there was too much... <laughs> You've got an untrustworthy face. Too much messing about at the start. Chris. Hello. I think that's just literally somewhere you know in... The, was it Peak District or like... Peak, Peak District. District. I think that's literally just somewhere you know in the Peak District that you've given a different name to. Mm. Matt, I believe you. Am I right? You think that William Robert Ogilvy Grant is a real person? Yeah, go on. Yeah, you're right. Yes! <laughs> 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 that is a point to Matt and finally a point to me <laughs> that won't stand the, the best thing is that, that I didn't use the exact title of the article I used the the bird's other mm. name because I wanted to lead on to the fact that it's also called the coloured bush robin but I couldn't <laughs> remember what it's funny name was throughout the entirety of that because if I'd have said bush robin you'd have gone straight over that song <laughs> 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 All right, oh, uh, only the Matt, hurts. Matt, you should go and pick a new article. We'll be back in a moment. Right, Matt has gone and found a new article. There are three still under here, and I am told that they have been written in each other's handwriting now, so I can't get any clues from that. So, dun, 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 dun. Agarantina occidentalis. Agarantina. Agar, agar, ag, <laughs> You know what, the first thing I'm going to do is ask each of you to pronounce that. Chris. Agarantina occidentalis. Gary? Agarantina occidentalis. Agarantina occidentalis. Chris, what, uh, what is that? You don't want it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How gauche should I be? <laughs> Gary? It was a form of ecclesiastical censure pre-reformation. <laughs> I'm just throwing, you're throwing long words in the scene you're trying to write them down. I know. I said pre-reformation. That seems to be very much in your wheelhouse, but then um, you would have picked something in your wheelhouse. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. It is a flowering plant with triangular, glandular oh. leaves. Triangular, glandular leaves. <laughs> that, 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 that. Glandular. If you, if, if you had not said the word glandular... That would have been entirely convincing. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> Chris, why would I not want Agarantina... Agaratina. 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 Why would I not want that? It is a minor bowel disorder Ooh. with everything that you imagine comes with that. Yep. I say minor, but long term. It's not something that goes away quickly. Caused by the accidental ingestion of a bacteria... That lives in soil. So it's accidental food contamination, generally in less developed nations. Right. That's that's entirely plausible, and I can't think of anything funny I to say I love that it always right. comes to me, and I always get exactly the same line. Oh, that sounds entirely That is entirely long. plausible. plausible. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, ecclesiastical censure yes. pre-reformation. Yeah. How would the ecclesiastical be censured? Well, it's one step short of the full excommunication. Can I ask a question quickly? What was the second word after ecclesiastical? Censure. And what does that mean? That means telling someone off. Does it? Yeah. 
It does, it does. No, you were sent it. You were told off in a serious and formal and recorded fashion, so I. Um, yeah, you're right. Well, of course, I'm going to pick an article that sits in my interest so I can bloody well remember it, um, as I did so well last time in remembering the non content of what I was talking about. Um, and also, um, yeah, it's one step short of the full letters communication where you would bell book and candle at the top of to get out of life, basically, and not come back. So, this is one uh, which is, the, the, if you like, the final warning. Uh, in which people will be forced to parade around the parish church of where they live wearing only a sheet. Parade around the parish Parade around the parish church wearing naught but a sheet. So everyone knew they had been dead naughty and that. Like a ghost? Well, you would look a bit like a ghost. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant Sorry, naughty just... like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that's a song. That's George, what, that's you'll not... stand charged of drifting into Mrs. Mason's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Your Honour, I drifted. Mm. <laughs> Generally hanging around <laughs> under a sheet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, that, that's what Agrantino Occidentalis is. And the Occidentalis relates to the direction in one would have to move around the church. Which direction would that be? Easterly. Oh, easterly around the church. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd set off in easterly direction because that's where Jerusalem is. And where the religious end of the church is, which is in the... East. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know, I know... I know. Christian churches point east. You yes. Know what, no, well, most do. Yeah. Not all of them. Oh, go on, just put a bloody line through it in your <laughs> ever so cocky fashion. Matt, Hi. it's a flowering plant with triangular glandular leaves. Could What do you mean by glandular leaves? Now, just because I read an article, uh, point, it doesn't yeah. mean I know what any of it means. And But it sounds like this is a joke article. Like, people seem to, like, defacing Wikipedia, which I think is a terrible idea, really, but it, it had that phrase. It, 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 before it got onto the, the details of the leaves, it said it was in the daisy family. Oh. And it was also known as Western snake root. Ooh, so you know how the And last... it can be found flowering in Utah. The, the last detail of yours there, Gary, essentially went, oh, this is full of this, oh, no... See, I was all like, this is, this is not a thing, this is not a thing. And then you came up with Western Snake Root. It's a good name. It's a really good name. That's a really believable name. Yes, because it doesn't sound glandular in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> if it turns out you've misread the phrase granular or something like that, I'd be, I'd be deeply, deeply upset. She's so close to being a genuine real life dickweed. <laughs> Man, there is, there is nothing here that I can immediately rule someone out on. He's done well. He's done well. <laughs> he has spit it this one. <laughs> Gary. There we go. I recognise that you're an expert in the subject. I think it may have been the first thing that went to your head when you saw something with, with that sort of Latin. Mm. And I think Occidentalis came in a little bit too late. So I'm going to throw that off. Also, At least he waited. <laughs> unfortunately, I have also just realised that Occidentalis does not mean Eastern. That would be the Orient. The Occident is the West. Mm. Which means, I'm going to rule you out because the odds, Matt, of you, who usually uses the phrase left and right, <laughs> west and east, knowing that Occidental <laughs> works with Western snake root. Matt, I believe you, am I right? Firstly, f*** you, I knew Occidental meant West. <laughs> Can we just use the phrase GCSE in Latin? <laughs> oh yeah! Every time. Every time. <laughs> and yes, it was me. Yes! <laughs> so that is two points the show to Matt, two points to me, and a deep apology for forgetting your Latin GCSE. <laughs> Agarethina occidentalis is a rhizomatous perennial herb growing fuzzy green or purple stems. The glandular leaves are triangular with serrated edges. What's a glandular leaf then? I don't know. I'm pressing oh glandular God. on it. It'll be a leaf that serves some function gland, in the way a gland does. A gland is defined functionally as a plant structure which secretes one or more products. <laughs> this may be located on or near the plant surface and secrete externally or be internal to the plant and secrete into a canal or reservoir. Oh, it's like a fly trappy thing then. Matt. Two points. Congratulations. I, I think we get a joint victory on this through mostly random chance of whose articles I picked. Yay! <laughs> I haven't got an outro. Join us next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Fade to black. <laughs>